JBN will keep you informed. I'm Michelle Jones. Before we get into the news, please remember to like, subscribe, leave a comment, and share the news with someone today. Now on to the news. Two rifles seized in major operation in Westmoreland. Two rifles and a quantity of ammunition have been seized by police during an intelligence and operation in Kings Valley District, Grangely in Westmoreland, on Monday, July 8. Reports are that at about 3.30 p.m., a team involved in a coordinated effort by the Westmoreland Divisional Intelligence Unit and other local police teams went to the area and searched an abandoned wooden structure located in a heavily vegetated area. Superintendent Othniel Dobson, commanding officer for Westmoreland, provided more details on the seizure. Between 3.30 and 6 p.m. today's date, the Westmoreland Police conducted a series of targeted operations at gangs, gangsters, and wanted men. During one of these operations within the Morgan's Bridge police area, these two high-powered rifles were recovered, along with two magazines and 49 rounds of ammunition. Two level three ballistic vests were, were also recovered. But the police believe that these um, weapons and ballistic vests were recently used in incidents of crime within the Morgan's Bridge era and that these weapons are part of the arsenal of the Kings Valley gang. The recovery of these weapons will surely put a dent in the gang activities within the, the space. The Westmoreland police continues to work assiduously targeting gangs, gangsters and wanted men in an effort to make the Westmoreland division a safer place. NCB Foundation pledges to match up $150 million in hurricane relief donations. The NCB Foundation has committed $20 million to relief efforts following the devastation caused by Hurricane Beryl. Chairman Michael Lee Chin also pledged to match donations provided to the Office of Disaster Preparedness and Emergency Management. Donations up to $150 million will be matched by the NCB Foundation. Prime Minister Andrew Holness says the contribution will assist in catering to residents most affected by the hurricane. A disaster fund website has been established to enable persons to make donations to Jamaica's relief efforts. Donors may do so at disasterfund.opm.gov.jm. The Prime Minister says the website will serve as a government centralized source of information and statistics on the impact of hurricane burial. It will also be the single source to accept donations from people wanting to support the national relief effort. He was speaking Monday afternoon at the launch of the Building Jamaica Better Fund Hurricane Burial Relief Coordination Committee at the office of the Prime Minister. Electricity restored to some St. Elizabeth residents and critical facilities. Residents of St. Elizabeth have started to receive electricity after the Jamaica Public Service JPS made headway in restoring service on Tuesday morning. The entire parish had been in darkness since last Wednesday when Hurricane Beryl lashed the island with strong winds. Media relations manager of the Light and Power Company, Audrey Williams, says about 2.30 a.m. electricity was restored to some critical facilities in St. Elizabeth. The Black River Hospital is back. We restored some NWC pumps. The restoration for the entire parish will take some time, weeks, leading up to a month, because we're not just doing repairs, we're actually rebuilding sections of the network, said Williams. The JPS says, in order to accelerate the pace of restoration, it will be redeploying more resources to St. Elizabeth. This means over the next few weeks, about 300 workers, a combination of JPS employees and contractors, will be deployed throughout the parish. Meanwhile, the company will be continuing restoration work across all parishes on Tuesday. Store clerk and bearer charged with businesswoman's murder. Two men who allegedly robbed a business establishment while posing as customers and shot and killed a businesswoman during the incident have been slapped with a slow charges. The accused are 18-year-old Siobhan O'Mealy, a store clerk of New Haven, Kingston 20, and 21-year-old Kimarley Ralston, a bearer of River Drive, also in the parish. O'Mealy and Ralston are charged with murder, robbery with aggravation, possession of a prohibited weapon, unauthorized possession of ammunition, and using a prohibited weapon to commit a felony. According to police reports, on Tuesday, April 10, about 1.40 p.m., both men entered a business establishment in Pembroke Hall, Kingston, where they allegedly posed as customers and robbed and shot 45-year-old Julian Brown, 
a businesswoman of Spanish town, St. Catherine. The police said they escaped in the area. However, both men were captured on CCTV footage. They were subsequently charged after a caution statement was recorded. Their court dates are being arranged. Teen allegedly stabs 57-year-old man to death during dispute. An 18-year-old is now facing murder charges. After allegedly stabbed an elder to death during an argument in Trelawney on Monday, May 20, charges 18-year-old Eric Simpson, also called Maka, of Water Lane, Falmouth in the parish. Simpson's charged with the murder of 57-year-old Errol Shirley of York Pastors, Wakefield, also in the parish. It is reported that at about 12.30 a.m., Simpson and Shirley had a dispute during which Simpson used a knife to inflict multiple wounds to Shirley's upper body. The police were alerted and Shirley was taken to hospital where he was pronounced dead. Simpson was later charged with the offence. He is scheduled to appear before the Trelawney Parish Court on Friday, July 12. Some 150 people still in shelters following passage of hurricane burial. Some 150 people remain in shelters almost a week after Hurricane Beryl passed over the island. This update was given by Minister of Local Government Desmond McKenzie on Tuesday. McKenzie says the occupied shelters are predominantly located across the southern section of the island, which was most affected by the weather system. He says the ministry is working to meet the relief demands of those in need. Those shelters, you know, as soon as we do an assessment to see what the conditions of those persons are, then we will make a determination. But we still have shelters that are active, and those shelters will remain open as long as there is a need for persons to, to occupy those shelters. So a lot of those who are there, homes have been damaged, are partially or fully uh, destroyed. The team, the poor relief department and the disaster coordinators are now presently doing an assessment of the various uh, individuals who are there working with the Ministry of Labor. Once that assessment has been done, then we will have to make a determination as to how we proceed. Those assessments have started. The team has been out and we are expecting by now on the weekend to, to get a proper assessment as to, to what we need to do going forward. The Ministry of Labor and Social Security, which is working alongside the local government ministry to provide support, indicated that more than 90% of the shelters have been deactivated. Is Miluk a French ever good heart? 79-year-old Amy Campbell has been in deep mourning after her older sister, Isilda James, more affectionately called Miss Icy, was founded in a pond in Dumfries, St. James, following the passage of Hurricane Beryl. Oh my God, I tell you something. I can't even eat. I feel it. I feel it. I know she would die one day, but the way she die, I feel it, Campbell said on Monday. The badly decomposed body of James, who was in her 90s and was said to have mental challenges, was found by residents on Saturday in the local pond, a few minutes away from her home in Dumfries, where she lived alone. It is believed that James fell into a trench near her home on Wednesday evening during the passage of the hurricane and was washed out of the pond. Campbell said that she got the devastating news of her death on Saturday, a day after another relative had gone to James's home to check on her. Friday night, when my family went and checked the house, but when him go check, him noticed that the back door did open, but him not see her. But them not bad at make no alarm because them did send on night night. As Saturday morning, you know me here, my son and my daughter and other people go and search, and I'll let police come up here and search for her. Campbell recounted, we say a young man did see one body in the pond and him go call the police. Daisy and Shaw, who lives across the road from the pond, said she last saw the senior citizen passing along the road when Wednesday afternoon, around the time Hurricane Beryl's effects, started to be felt in the area. What is Sam just a farm? I look a breeze of blowing rain and fall. She passed go up the road. She was in a black dress and I don't see her back from that. That was about four o'clock. So maybe she was going to the shop, Shaw recounted. I said the body turns the body, but I didn't know it was a body. Because normally when rain falls and things come down from that side, a lot of garbage circle and bank up. So I think it was just rubbish. But gradually it starts to start from like a human being, Shaw added. Shaw's theory was confirmed after a drone was sent over the pond and the body spotted. Like other community members, she theorized that the elderly woman went to her gate and was swept away by the water in a flooded trench, which empties out into the pond. Hanover resident Keon Sterling was previously reported to have died in Jamaica due to the effects of Hurricane Beryl, which was classified as a Category 4 storm and passed just south of Jamaica. A St. Andrew man, Alric Moncrief, remains missing after being washed away by water in a drain last Wednesday. 
Reflecting on James's life and character, Campbell said that she did her best to help her sister, who was the oldest of ten siblings, whenever James came to visit. I don't know if his cars are hidden or right, but she has a come with some story about the long time things, all about what she do for people. Every day I tell my cousin, say, make she come, make she come. Me will give her anything me have, because she not have no children. So if anything, I will have to jump around her, said Campbell. Another neighbor, Tony, remembered James as a generous woman, whose only issue was slight senility. She helped a lot of people, and in terms of any government issue things being given away, as long as she know, the whole community are going to know. Miss Ice was a good, good woman. It's only that she was getting like a senile. She sent things to you, and by the time I said back to her, she don't remember, said Tony. JBN, we keep you informed. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, leave us a comment, and click the notification bell to receive our daily news items.